Question two tonight is about barn weddings, because we're seeing a lot more of those. The three of us are seeing quite a few, and people across the country are seeing quite a few of those. But the question was involving uh, if a person's starting to bring back the foggers and hazers, because I have not run into a barn yet that had any kind of smoke detection devices like that that would allow, that would make it so you can use those. But I was I was just thinking, let's expand it a little bit, not only with those, but are you doing anything different when it comes to your light show? Because there's some some aspects of this, uh, and I'll, I'll mention this, but are you doing anything different when it comes to your shows uh, by because you're playing in barns more often? Kevin, you got to go first. This, yeah, and that's great because I got a simple answer to that. I don't even own any hazers or foggers. Um, <laughs> It, it it for me it went out in the 90s uh, with the bubble machines and um i just never reinvested in them um so no i don't have i don't even own them so i'm out i i i'm gonna echo the, the statement of i don't have any but i'm not about to rush out and purchase any because one of the things that i've noticed a lot of times the barns kind of a selling point is they have the big barn doors open Right. So, so they're like, you know, it, it's, I'm not going to really create a lot. I mean, I could, I guess I could create some, you know, to be able to have that, that fill, but it's, is, there's not another wall there to kind of help keep it to kind of fill the space and get the best bang out of the buck for us. So when it comes to the phase, uh, Fargus and Hazers, I'm not, um, to the other part to that, am I doing anything different? Um, one of the things that I've kind of found is because of the way Barnwood is monograms, Sometimes you can find some walls where some of my regular ballroom venues are so busy with all the decorations they put on their walls, it makes it hard. But barns, I kind of have some extra flat surfaces I've been able to find. So Mm. I've been able to kind of encourage that and be like, hey, here's something fun we can do. Got a great space for this right here. We can put it and be awesome. Uh, So that's one thing. And then a key point or some some focal points for uplighting. um, A lot of times you have your bays, right? And they have like the bottom or the, the rungs taken out of the ladders because, you, you know, drunk people climbing ladders is probably okay. a liability. Um, but they're a perfect spot to be able to put up lighting and just kind of shine up through. So you have a spot where it wouldn't be out on the edges of the room, but more to the middle piece, almost like you'd have columns if you, you know, depending upon where you're looking at, where you could put that and just suddenly shine up and add some extra uh, light closer to the dance floor without also being a tripping hazard because it's in between the two columns, nobody's kicking it the way they might some other places. What if they wanted to kick it? Well, they tend to try and figure out a way to do it no matter oh, where well, I put it. Good. I that's think good. if that's I put good. it on the ceiling, somebody would learn how to walk up there that's just because good. there's a light on the ceiling. That's nice yeah. to know. Nice to know. Um, I've actually, a couple of weeks ago, I was, I was thinking about that. It's like, huh, you know, we could, we could pull these out again. And then I remembered that when we had them, and we used to be able to run them, you, there was always some people in the crowd. And this is back you now when when c- smoking cigarettes indoors was still a thing. And there would be people who would complain about the, sm- the smell and the fog or the haze even back then. And it's like, okay, so now that was back then when it was more cigarette smoke was a thing. Now I can't see that it would be well received, especially with a middle or a mixed age group. Uh, I think people are going to be like, oh my gosh, that just stinks and – because we just are, we're not as forgiving when it comes to things in the air because we're not used to cigarette smoke. Somebody was uh, at one of the barns three or four weeks ago. Somebody was standing outside and they were having a, a smoke and it was coming through the barn because as these old barns are pretty, pretty drafty. And we were getting it upstairs there by the dance floor. And it was amazing how many people were turning and looking and were like, <laughs> you know, that would have never happened back, uh, you know, in the early 2000s or in the 90s. Because it was just indoor smoking, you know, there were ashtrays every everywhere type of things um, towards the, in those years. So, um, yeah, I, I thought about it for a minute and uh, thought, nah, discard the idea. I do have them. I've got two or three foggers probably sitting in this building, and then there's hazers in the other. And I actually, about a month ago, I just pulled one out and decided, huh, I wonder if this thing still works. I haven't used it in 20 years, 15 years, whatever it's been. And it plugged it in, this old American DJ thing starts rumbling away, and, and then there's haze coming out. It's like, huh, oh, it still works. I'll be darned. What was it doing? It was, yeah, again, <laughs> yeah, just making haze. Actually, it's more of a compressor sound, so it sounds like a little, a little, uh, 
compressor you'd use to inflate the tires of your your car or something. <laughs> as far as light shows, yes, I have changed my light shows. Uh, when I'm in in um, a nicer venue, I've been using uh, because we've got them custom programmed. I've, we've been using some of the more the beam type lighting moving heads where they can do gobos and different things. When we move those into barns, with and our barns are typically we're up in a hayloft area and it's all dark wood color. In the walls are so gobo type lighting effects don't do they just get lost up lights in those situations can be can get lost so what we've we've changed is we've gone to um we are the feature light in that show is a mirror ball a huge mirror ball and we've gone to washes uh, we've got main washes mainly and then we have a couple of moving head fixtures that are just really bright uh spin or spin uh spot or or wash they've got the zoom capability but they're really bright and we can make that work the ceiling and you'll have a nice a nice effect from that but some of the traditional lights that i would use in a regular venue just don't work in a barn because of the darkness so um, we've gotten away from those and we've had some really good uh, with with the changing of light show for the barns people have really loved it and that crazy old uh, mirror ball people are like just i love the disco ball i mean it's just it's a pain in the butt to set up. Oh you've yeah, got this this I don't know. I think it's a thirty inch, but it, it's certainly it's at least a twenty four inch. It's a huge thing. Um, it took a long time to find it, but it is it is a neat classic effect that it's very nostalgic. Very much so, just like we are. Yes, yes. Okay, let's jump to our next question here, guys. Question three tonight is about how far would you be willing to go for a Klondike? No, no, a wedding, wedding. <laughs> that was it. Um, I like so, that first question a little bit better. As hot as it's been lately, yeah, exactly. But, yes. It'd probably be much, much better actually. Now I'm thinking ice cream would be good. Anyway, uh, distance travel. This is something that uh, that that a lot of us, you know, depending upon where you're at, it can be, you know, five miles is, is a, a trip for you. Some people, it's several hours. Um, what becomes – now, let's just look at in a vehicle, us hauling our own system and performing for a – not a friend or someone I know, so a, a customer, just a, an, a customer that has called you up and said, hey, I really think we're connecting well. I want to hire you. How far would you be willing to travel under the, that kind of a guise for an event? And, Dan, I think you're starting this one. So under those conditions, about an hour, hour and ten. Okay. That's about my, that's about my extent. Okay. Kevin? I am a gig pig and nice. I will take I will go anywhere they pay for me to go. Um I've done San Diego. I just got a lead lead in for Lincoln, Nebraska, which is like four hours away. I've done Kansas City, Chicago, Minneapolis, a lot of like Decorah, Iowa, which is like three and a half hours. Um I do some corporate events for America's top workplaces. This year I've been to Milwaukee, Oklahoma, Green Bay. Um, so yeah, wherever they're willing to pay my travel expenses, uh, and I love going to Newtown because like sometimes, you know, you get the same referrals and, you know, you have to always change up your show and that one, you can just go be yourself and, and have a great time. And if they're just willing to pay my fee to get me there and, uh, overnight and all that stuff, you betcha, I'll go anywhere. You are a gig pig, aren't you? Yeah, I am. <laughs> I had another word, but I thought well, this is a PG show. Yeah, so there I you go. Um, so at one time the travel wasn't a big deal and I would be, you know, three, four hours was, wasn't was super common, but it would be a few times during the the, uh, the year. There would be that three to four hour travel one way. In our case, because we're in rural Minnesota, that puts us out at 125 to 150 miles, uh, maybe one way. As time has gone on, yes, this we've had two weddings so far this summer where we have traveled 100 miles one way. My... I don't like to do that anymore. It's just getting home at three o'clock. It just does not excite me. So when I, unless I know in those cases, I knew the people we have done multiple weddings for them. So I felt a little obligation to be the one to go to uh, travel and do that. But if it's someone that I'm just, uh, just meeting with about an hour is kind of my max, uh, my max of where, where I'll go now. Um, and it has nothing to do with, you know, like Bill Herman's video where he talked to, and he's driving to go meet these people and talking about, you know, to help plan and such. Um, most of the time, I'm we're doing everything via Zoom anyway when it comes to planning, so that's really not a factor in it. It's just that t- three-hour trip in the morning. So to give you an idea for those of you who aren't in the Midwest of how this how this would pan out, 
uh, ceremony, let's say the ceremony is at three o'clock, that means the dinner is going to be about uh, five o'clock. The dance is going to start about seven o'clock. So if the ceremony is at three o'clock and I have to do sound for that, we're going to be arriving somewhere between noon and, and one. Um, the boys go and set up one sound system. I set up the other one. Uh, ceremony, they go and they go do that. So if we have to be there at even one at the latest, which is we'd be there probably 12, 30, 12, three-hour drive, which means we're leaving somewhere around 9 or 10 in the morning. And then if we get done at 11 o'clock or midnight, which seems like every the most of them are midnight this year, we have to tear down. You know, you've still got the two and a half to three hours, so we're getting back at three in the morning, whatever time it is. It just don't do well with that anymore. You don't make them get you a hotel room? Uh, I've never really been a big fan of that. We've done it once in my whole time um, that that we had a uh, had a hotel. Lori, that was back when Lori and I were DJing. Um, we, we were both going separate directions, but there was one of the weekends where it worked out that she didn't have a show, and we just decided that hey, this is this is when we're going to go spend at this casino in Western Minnesota. And if I remember correctly, is that uh, once we were done with the show, and we were so wound up after the show that by the time we fell asleep. And then uh, the Sunday morning, like at nine o'clock, it's housekeeping, bang, 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 bang on the door. So, but you fell asleep about three, three o'clock or something anyway. So after that, it's like, yeah, there's just, we're just not gonna, not gonna. Oh, play. wow. I, yeah, I make them get me a hotel room and I don't charge them for the hotel room. I just say, look, you give me a hotel room. I just don't want a closet. Yeah. Um, I do know some local DJs that will, will charge them for the hotel room and then not stay there and keep the money and to me that is just wrong right thank you dan yeah i'm like that's just wrong yeah. Yeah. so i'm like look give me a hotel room and if it's a real early one like you talked about then i need to be there on friday night just make sure and i explained to him like you know if you get done your wedding at 11 o'clock i tear down 11 45 i can't be on the road till one o'clock it's not safe because i've got there at one you know it's a 12 hour day um and even for my djs and like i said if they're willing for my overnights and my mileage and my fee then they'll do it. If not, I said, and I always tell them like, maybe you can find somebody locally cheaper. And I, I mean, I don't beg them for the events, but I also am not going to cut myself short and drive till three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And I have, I, gotta, and I don't have younger kids either. Like you, Dan, I'm sorry to interrupt. I don't have smaller kids like either one of you guys. So, um, it's a different ball game for me. I, you know, well, and that's when we're talking about the distance, I mean, that, that right there pulls into it. You know, and also I, I would say it's also different if I'm trying to fill my calendar to put food on my table versus, you know, this is, you know, I, I'm very vocal. Like this is my second job. I treated it very much as if it's equal with the first as far as how I treat it. But in the same respect, if I decide to take two less gigs, everybody's still eating at my house. Right. So, so I can be more selective in that aspect. I can make sure that I'm, I'm, home longer for my kids. But the question that I wanted to follow up with this is, all right, so so thinking caps, because you guys have been in this since, you know, the dinosaurs were dancing and getting mm -hmm. married. Um, what is the furthest wedding that you've ever done? Because, you know, Cubby, your corporate events have taken you all over the place. So I'm going to kind of toss them to the side. What's the furthest you've ever gone for a wedding, friend or otherwise, doesn't matter? San Diego. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with just traveling via vehicle, as far as uh, the, where I hauled my own system. It was a six hour uh, middle of North Dakota, okay. so that would be mine was two and a half hours to Fargo, and then it was another three and a half hours out. Okay, Lots of I'm I'm glad. Mine was four, and that was just this past April for a friend of mine up in Erie. Mm. Um, but this is my year of traveling, so I've got that one. I've got a friend of mine who I'm doing her daughter's wedding, and it. That's two hours, and then I've got a coworker who's two hours in another direction. I don't know why everybody wants me to uh, travel this year, but well, it's because Day is giving them your phone number. I'm, I'm reading it out on Facebook right here, so that explains a lot. <laughs> Did he put it out there? That I does explain it. it. Yes, yeah, he does explain give, it. He, if it's too far, he gives them Dan's phone number. So there it is, right there, Dan. It explains why it's your year of travel. <laughs> Thanks, Day. Thanks. But for I, the, the question I've got is why? Why am I not getting him down in Day's area? If that's the case, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind driving south a little bit, but oh, funny. Oh, well. funny. All right, gentlemen, let's head to our next question. 